In June 1981, the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported five cases of pneumonia in homosexual men. The unusual thing was that these pneumonia cases were caused by a microorganism which is normally not harmful for us. And soon more and more cases were reported in people of different sexualities and genders. Affected people had a defective immune system, they lost weight and experienced fever and sores. The disease was fatal and scientists tried to figure out what happened here. In 1983 it finally became clear that this disease was caused by the Human Immunodeficiency Virus or HIV. Today we know ways to treat HIV, but still each day over 6000 people are infected and many die. For over 40 years scientists tried to develop a vaccine against HIV with little success, but this might soon change. A new vaccine has shown a 97% success rate in provoking immune cells which are important to fight off HIV. So with that, my name is Gerhard Steinig and today we talk about a possible HIV vaccine. HIV or the Human Immunodeficiency Virus is a virus which causes the Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome or AIDS. We have already covered HIV on this channel when we talked about two people which have been cured of this disease. So the beginning will be quite similar but it is important to understand how the virus infects our cells. HIV is often transmitted by sharing injection drug equipment or by having unprotected sexual intercourse. Once HIV particles have entered the bloodstream they infect a subpopulation of T cells. T cells are a special type of immune cells that will become important in a minute. Once HIV has entered a T cell it starts to activate its machinery and makes copies of its genetic information. The goal of HIV is to integrate its genetic information into the DNA of the host cell. If that happens the virus often becomes silent for a very long time. And this is a specifically nasty mechanism as our immune system is not able to recognize that something's going wrong here. But eventually the virus will reactivate itself and start to make copies of itself and assemble new viral particles. These particles are then released and are ready to infect new T cells. The whole process normally takes a couple of years and in this time frame the infected person might not even know that they have HIV. Once however enough T cells are being infected or have been destroyed then AIDS might occur. Symptoms of AIDS include weight loss, fever, skin rashes or having white lesions around your mouth. Since the immune system of the patient does not work properly anymore, other microorganisms can now start to infect the patient which are normally no harm for us. We call these infections opportunistic infections as they can ultimately lead to the death of the patient. Today there are different treatments to keep the number of active viral particles in the blood of HIV patients very low. As a consequence the disease can kind of be controlled but not all people in the world have access to these drugs. And this is why it is crucial for scientists to develop an HIV vaccine. Unfortunately nearly all vaccine trials have failed so far. And there are different reasons why it is specifically difficult to develop a vaccine against HIV. One of the major reasons is how classical vaccines normally work. In classical vaccines we normally inject inactivated viruses or parts of viruses. Once someone gets vaccinated his or her immune system starts to recognize the particles and fights them off. And here comes a very important step. A type of immune cells called B cells start to make antibodies against surface proteins. Antibodies are proteins which recognize specific structures called antigens. So in this case antibodies recognize proteins on the surface of the virus as antigens. After vaccination some B cells keep producing these antibodies which then float around in the blood and which makes us immune. And this works with most viruses, but not with HIV. Antibodies are often not produced in the first place since surface proteins are not recognized. You see, the surface of HIV is heavily coated by sugars. In fact, there are so many sugars that they mask the underlying surface proteins. So this means that our immune system does not get in touch with surface proteins, meaning that no antibodies are being made and that means that we do not become immune. 
And the second and very important reason why there is no HIV vaccine is that HIV is highly diverse. HIV is a virus with a comparatively high mutational rate. Each time HIV starts to make copies of itself, there is a comparatively high chance that the produced particles are slightly different from the original virus. This means that in the long run, HIV particles within the same patient can become very dissimilar from each other. And this effect is even greater between people, so we can really say that there is not one single type of HIV, but each HIV case is unique. Even if we have a classical HIV vaccine, it will only protect us against certain HIV particles and not all of them. So these are some reasons why most HIV clinical trials have failed so far. Over the past decades, only a combination of two vaccines have been shown to lower the risk in acquiring HIV. This vaccine combination was developed in 2009 and has shown a 31% reduction in infections. Ultimately, this form of protection also seems to vanish after a year, so that is that. But HIV has one fatal flaw and we can use that fatal flaw to turn the tables. We've already mentioned that HIV has a high mutational rate, meaning that it changes its appearance in order not to be recognized by the immune system. But HIV cannot mutate everywhere without facing consequences. Some parts of surface proteins are very important for the overall shape of the virus. If these regions are changed, then the overall particle might fall apart. Very dramatic. We say that these regions are conserved, so although HIV mutates very quickly, there are certain parts which stay the same between patients. And this is where the new HIV vaccine comes into play. Over the past years, more and more so-called broadly neutralizing antibodies have been detected in HIV patients. Broadly neutralizing antibodies recognize conserved protein regions on the surface of HIV. So each of these antibodies was analyzed in order to assess where exactly the bind on the virus. And based on this data, antigens could be developed, which are now the key component of this vaccine. But there is one catch. The reason why it took so long for these antibodies to be discovered is that they are very rare. Only one out of one million B cells is actually able to make these kind of antibodies. Therefore, a new technique called germline targeting had to be implemented. In germline targeting, we deliver our antigens to very specific B cells. And in this case, we are talking about B cells, which are able to make broadly neutralizing antibodies. So you might not ask, okay, what are the first results? In a phase one clinical trial, 48 healthy individuals were given the vaccine. The vaccine appeared to be safe as no severe side effects were reported and it also seemed to have the desired effect. In fact, broad neutralizing antibodies were detected in 97% of all participants. So far we do not know if this vaccine is actually sufficient to protect all of us against HIV, but making these rare antibodies is remarkable. So again, this could become one of the biggest breakthroughs in the history of vaccine research. I mean, I get shivers when I think about it, that's really crazy. Okay, I think I get too excited, but what do you think? What do you think about this technology and do you think that we can beat HIV in the long run? And let me know in the comment section what other topic I should cover next. Okay, and let's make it quick again. Like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you're new here and hit the bell button in order to stay informed about the latest and greatest discoveries in life sciences. And with that, I'll see ya. If you want to know how two people were cured of HIV, click on this video here. If you are interested in the AstraZeneca blood clotting controversy, you might like this video here.